We were on that floor for only three and a half weeks. Um, I literally did not know that my neighbors were drug dealers. And had I known, I would have moved my family in a heartbeat. I came home on the 18th and, um, and uh, told Chris that I probably might not be able to stay home on the 19th. And uh, so um, I spoke to him on Lent saying, you know, the fireplace people might come just in case the phone call came from work. And I had to go back to work so um, the fireplace people will come and make sure um, uh, they clean it out nicely and you'll be here and I'll check on you. Eileen's biggest regret is that when she and Christopher made their plan that day, they had no inkling that others had set in motion a much more nefarious plan. Less than three kilometers from the Mohens building, the Stanley was home to Red Scorpion gangster Cody Havisher, now one of the accused Surrey Six killers. On the day of the murders, his fellow Red Scorpion Matt Johnston, and a man we can only call Person X, arrived at the Stanley just before 1.50 in the afternoon. Police doing an unrelated drug investigation captured them on film. The trial heard that Johnston and X cleaned their guns with Windex inside Havisher's 16th floor apartment before all three headed down to the parkade at 2.08. The car arrived in the parkade of the Balmora just before 2.23. The driver nearly ran over Helen Lee and her three-year-old son. Lee testified that she saw the three men get out of the car and make their way to a gate leading to an elevator into the Balmoral. An electronic key device that had been passed to Johnston earlier that day was used to enter the building gate at 2.23. Inside suite 1505 was Corey Lal, his brother Michael, and their friend Ryan Bartolomeo. Michael and Ryan had been cooking crack in the kitchen while Corey did some paperwork for his drug line. Gas fitter Ed Schellenberg arrived to service the fireplace. It was supposed to be his last apartment of the day. Phone records show that Corey Lau called a friend from suite 1505 at 227. The call was cut off just as Lau was heard saying, oh f the door, that was when the killers arrived. Chris Mohan's bad luck was timing. He left for his basketball game as one of the gangsters was checking the hallway. He was dragged into suite 1505. Eddie Narong also arrived to the unfolding nightmare. As the apartment was ransacked for cash and drugs, the six victims were forced to the floor with hoodies and jackets thrown over their heads. Ed Schellenberg was close to the fireplace where he'd been working. Eddie Narong lay beside him to the right, and Corey Lau was to Eddie's right. On the other side of a black leather love seat, closest to the door was Chris Mohan. To his left was Michael Lal, and on the other side of Lal was Ryan. They were confined like that for several minutes, and then each was shot in the head and back execution style. I came here and I parked the car. I went to the lobby. I was met by the same officer. And I told him, I said, listen, you be, no one called me. And on the news, they're saying they're taking the bodies out of the building. And you still haven't told me whether my son is upstairs or not. So he said, oh, we need to get a room for you. That was confirmation to me in itself. that Christopher was no longer in this beautiful world of ours. Mm -hmm.